Oh, good afternoon. Everyone here in Toronto, good afternoon. I just want to say hi to everyone else that is coming on. Um, I just opened up uh, five minutes earlier just to do a little bit of uh, promotion here, just to let everybody know that I'm online. So um just want to let everybody know that uh, down in New Zealand today, it is the 25th of April. And uh, it is Anzac Day down there in New Zealand. And uh, Anzac Day, they have it today, uh, which is um, Sunday and Monday down there. So, um, lest we forget. And I just want to say a couple of things about that uh, for those that are just still tuning in. And um, you can see a couple of people are coming on. Oh, Dave. Thank you for coming on, Dave. My buddy from uh, Virginia is on. So it is Anzac Day uh, in New Zealand. It's a... Um, Anzac Day is a national day of remembrance in Australia and New Zealand that broadly commemorates all Australians and New Zealanders who served and died in all wars, conflicts, and peacekeeping operations, and the contribution and suffering of all those who have served, lest we forget. So I just wanted to um, say that. Also wanted to um, bring up my my family that served in the war. It's my uncle Sam that served in the Second World War, and I just want to um, say that it was a. Uh, I remember playing around with them. Back home, so uh, those those were during the days. New Zealand Army. He was a sergeant. It's my brother Philip. And I just want to also bring up my other brother that served also in the army, the New Zealand Army. He lives in Rotorua, Hone. My brother Hone Tarafiti. So I just want to thank all of them. Thank for their service. And um, my Uncle Sam and my brother Philip, they're the youngest brother, and Honey, they're, they're younger than me. Um, so I want to thank them for their service to the New Zealand Army and, and to New Zealand. So that gets me uh, now to um, talk about my guests that I'm going to bring on. Wow, it's not my guests, really. They're friends, because I don't have guests on my show. I have friends on my show. So let me just talk a little bit about this gentleman. Mr. Murray Crompton is his name. This gentleman's got a lot of experience. He's traveled all over, all over the world in several different countries, and he speaks a, you know, few different languages because he travels around a lot so um, I can't wait I just can't wait to to bring him up and talk to him and find out his experience on everything and I just want to tell you folks I'm pretty excited to have him on the screen with me so I'm gonna bring him up right now ladies and gentlemen this is my friend mr. Murray Kiwi we call him the Kiwi, Crompton. Here he comes. He's coming up now. Murray, how you doing, sir? I'm good, mate. Oh, got beautiful. Got my Kiwi hat on. Yes, yeah, you got your Kiwi hat there, mate. One of them. <laughs> really, really cool, really cool. Let me just take this, um, I'll just take that music off there, and then we can uh, have a quick chat. So, uh, first of all, Murray, thank you very much for accepting this uh, invitation to come on to my uh, Maori Chair TV, but the platform oh. is called Talking Voices. 
So thank you for coming on. Uh, you're welcome. The, the million dollars will come in very handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have it by now. <laughs> so, so you have a decision to, to continue the, the interview or stop. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you, Murray. And the hat looks good, by the way. The hat looks good. Yes, yes. Oh, I've got to put on a few hats. Uh, I'm a man of many hats. Oh, I'm, I'm literally. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure you are. You got many hats. So um, yes. Yeah, so Murray, you can. Um, geez, man, you can start telling us about um, born and raised. Where you were born and where were you raised? Um, uh, born and raised in Christchurch. Yeah. Um, went to university there and got a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, I worked for a couple of years in a travel and shipping agency and then wanted to go see the world. So my boss at the time had just come back from working, he was an accountant, uh, working three years in uh, Toronto. So he said, why don't you go to Canada? So I said, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> So he, he said, you've got to do two things, right away for New Zealand passport and right away for Canadian immigration. So that took seven months. And then I got on a uh, cruise ship, the Oriana, to Hawaii, had a week there. And then uh, I got put in the wrong cabin the first night. So I met this Aussie guy and we got on great. So he was staying on a ship to Vancouver. Yeah. So I flew to Vancouver and had a couple of days with him, sleeping under his sister's dining room table. And then I had <laughs> a, a Greyhound bus pass. So I went right down the west coast of the U.S. as far as uh, Tijuana, across the bottom, up the east coast into Toronto. And uh, I got a job there with a chartered accounting firm. Wow. So when you, um, like in Christchurch, you said you, you graduated there in Christchurch. Yeah. And then you worked in, in Christchurch too before you yeah, came for, over, right? For, yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. And you worked at a company yeah. there? At a at a Yeah, it was a travel a travel and shipping agency. Oh travel and fun, shipping fun, agency. Funnily enough. Gotcha. And right. Um, <laughs> uh, and and this you know, I got this new boss. Right. I was a sort of junior accountant because I was right. right out of university. Gotcha, yeah. And um, this guy came uh, and uh, you know, I said to him one day, I mean, in those days, most Kiwis went back to England and went to Europe. Yes, you know? that's true, yeah. So so going to Canada was something totally different. I knew nothing about it apart from Eskimos and Igloos. Yes, yes. And you know what? I think you came over about the same time as me. You came over in right. Canada in 1970, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's about the same time. That's about the same time I came over uh, to Canada too in 1970. So did yeah. you did you uh, before you came overseas? Did you go anywhere in New Zealand first? To like did you like have you traveled around in New Zealand first? Oh came? yes, like my father used to took uh, took the take the family um, all over the place, mostly you know camping holidays. But you know yeah. we swapped houses once in Auckland, and we you know went camping on the west coast of New Zealand. Uh, we went up to Wellington where there was relatives. We went down to Queenstown and that whole South Island adventure area. Yeah. Uh, so I'd seen quite a bit of New Zealand before I, uh, you know, left to come here. And I, when I was 18, I, I, had a, I went with three other guys from school and we went to Australia. I went to Sydney and Brisbane. Yes. Uh, Surface yeah. Paradise yeah. for a couple of weeks. Yeah, so that's that yeah, yeah. That's what I did too before I came away to Canada. I I did a tour of New Zealand uh, because I had the opportunity to tour anyway. With when I had that um, when I got that contract with the platters that got me across New Zealand to travel different um, venues and different cities in New Zealand. So yeah, I got to see New Zealand before I left. So. Um, so, uh, so you didn't have a job when you came over to? No, uh, I, I didn't even know. I had a, some addresses of right like people, friends, friends, friends yes, that, that I looked up who were quite kind to put me up for a couple of weeks until I got myself organised with an apartment. Yes, uh, sharing with others. Mm -hmm. and then I got the job with the chartered accounting firm. Wow, 
Yeah. And that was in, in Toronto? In Toronto. And I think it was uh, around September. Oh, okay. 1970. Yeah. yeah. And, yes. Um, yes. So you, so you immigrated to, to, to Canada then, but before that you did a, like you saying before you went on a ticky tour, I guess, you know, down in the States from on, on the Greyhound bus for three months. Yeah. Well, I landed, I, I, Landed in Vancouver and went through the from Hawaii. Process. From Hawaii. From Hawaii. Right? Yeah. 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 And then I took off down to the States because I'd already bought this Greyhound bus pass. Oh, yeah. And so, and, and it was a couple of girls that uh, my buddy and I had picked up hitchhiking. One was in Oregon and one was in Northern California. Right. So I came down the West Coast and, and visited them and then went on down through LA and Hollywood and oh, down yes. to Tijuana. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I went up into Oklahoma briefly to visit people I'd met on the ship, and then down to New Orleans, Miami, uh, up to uh, you know Washington, New York, and then I came up to Toronto and got the job and got the apartment. Well, wow, yeah. Who was the first person you bumped into or you met in Toronto when you arrived here? Was there anybody that you already knew? Or you? No, not really. No, 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 no. So okay, so you started working here in in Toronto, um, saving some coins, I, I guess. Yes. I and how long did you work in Toronto here? Well, I I worked for about nine months, but I was doing auditing and I was doing mm. troubleshooting, and right, it's not very creative stuff, and. Uh, it doesn't sound like it either. No. <laughs> Troubleshooting. And, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was oddball cases and things. So yeah, uh, when it got to be the summer, when chartered accountants aren't busy anymore, yes. uh, I thought, well, I think I might bugger off to Europe for a couple of months. And then I started thinking, do I want to come back to this job? I thought, I don't think so. So I said <laughs> to the guy, look, I think I'm going to quit, and if I come back and there's a job, fine. If not, don't. Yeah. So I flew over to England, and I and I reconnected with this guy that I'd met on the ship right? and met some of his Aussie buddies. And then um, one of them wanted to do Scandinavia, so I went with him, and we did Scandinavia, and then, you know, I did um, – I, I, I visited more people that I'd met on the ship. Yeah in like Holland and uh, Netherlands. And uh, then I ended up at the Oktoberfest in Munich and then to Italy and Greece. And I lived three months in Greece, uh, with Turkey. And then uh, I got a ship from Greece to Naples, to Marseille, to Barcelona, and went to the south of Spain and lived there for, well, Three months. Yes. Yeah. And then camped in the in the Pyrenees for three months with a German guy that I had met, and he had this uh, Spanish girlfriend, mm -hmm. and she couldn't read or write. She was gypsy, actually. Right. And uh, he had two little kids with him, five and six, and uh, uh. He was trying to get her out of the country, but she didn't have a passport. Yeah. So okay. in the first, All right. yeah. he left. He left me with a son and a tent, and he took off to the south of Spain <laughs> to get all the paperwork done faster. <laughs> yeah. I had the six-year-old kid, who I had to look after for a right. month, and then he went. She came back, and we hopped in the car yeah. and we drove up to Hamburg, and he started a gardening business, and I worked with him for a couple of months because they were building the Olympic Games site. Yeah. And I thought there might be work up there. Well, I worked with him for a month, stayed another month, and then I decided I'll come back to Canada, which I did. Yeah, and I think that's one of your passions too is gardening. It is. Yeah, it I is. know you like yeah. that, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so um, going around to different parts of the world in different countries, uh, you obviously have made a lot of friends because I know you've got a lot of friends um, all over and um, – and even here in, in Toronto, I know you and I, we have a very good friend that owns the restaurant here, Mr. Martin Miskimming. And, Martin uh, Miskimming, yes. who also came over in 1970. Oh, yeah. So you can uh, go ahead and tell a story about him if you know when he came over. 
Well, uh, uh, well, I didn't know him then. I yes. didn't know him until the eighties after he set up his restaurant Hemingway's, right. which has been going forty years. Yes. Um, but uh, I, uh, when uh, after I, 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 when I came back from Europe, I got a job in industry with accounting, mm -hmm. uh, which is far more interesting than being a chartered accountant doing auditing. And uh, uh, they went out of business in a end of 82, gave me three months severance pay. So I took that, went down to New Zealand, and then did my first trip through Asia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. when I came back uh, on that trip, it's funny who you run into. I ran into an old university buddy of mine who had the rights to sell New Zealand wool products in Canada. Really? <laughs> and Yeah. And so he set up a store in Vancouver, and then he came across to Toronto when I got back from Asia, and he yes. hired me as VP operations. So we set up two, two stores in Toronto, and I then he went back to Aussie, where he was based in Sydney. And so I had to suddenly be in the retail business, and he didn't have much of an advertising budget. So uh, I got on CFRB, one of their radio shows, and talked yes, about yes. wool. And uh, this was a sleeping, uh, a woolen blanket you put on top of your mattress, and it helps you sleep. Right. And uh, there was knitting wool and kids' sheepskin rugs and things like that. So, uh, you know, I got on a radio talk show about wool, and, my God, the phone ran off the wall for three weeks. <laughs> Sold 50 grand worth of these things. Wow. <laughs> but uh, after six months, it became obvious to the owners of the wool that um, they should go with the big, uh, big stores uh, like uh, Eaton, Simpsons, Hudson's yes, Bay yeah, Company, the big stores, do yeah. cooperative advertising. So it was a tough thing to de decreate everything I'd created. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after that, I moved into fine art publishing. I met this artist and I got a, a, him a commission to do a caricature painting. And uh, I did limited edition art prints, but it was of the Toronto Stock Exchange, and the timing was off, and the guys didn't have any money, so that <laughs> idea bombed. So then I got into uh, helping some people book their trips in New Zealand. That's what I, I was going to ask you about. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just started doing that because I wasn't, you know, I was a free, free agent, yeah, so to speak. So. Um, I started to do that, and then there was a little ad in the paper about training you to be a travel agent, which was basically a travel agent looking for outside agents who would bring the yes. business, and you'd get a piece of the commission. Right. So I started to do that. I think in my first month, I made 40 bucks. <laughs> but this is where uh, Mark well, McSkimming tip. from Hemingway's Bar comes in. <laughs> uh, he started referring people to me, and he goes on ski trips, so he had me book those. And I ended up with a lot of clients out of Hemingway's bar. And uh, one of them, particularly the woofer, became one of my biggest clients. Oh, yeah. And he's one of my biggest friends now. So, I mean, right. and that business, people start out as friends, end up as clients. And some of the clients end up as friends. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, you know, it was just a word of mouth business. Well, that's uh, why I met you, uh, Murray. I met you down at Hemingway's. Hemingway's, yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah, got a lot. I met, I met a lot of Hemingway. people at Hemingway's. Yeah, absolutely. And the, you know, you know yeah. the trick is not the trick is not to screw up too many times with the peasants' holidays. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, so listen, I've got some pictures that I'm going to put up, and then I'm going right. to get you to talk about them. So we'll right. go through that too at the same time. But um, okay. I'm going to start off with this one here. I think this is a, a very, very nice picture. And everybody, and thanks everybody for watching too, by the way. There's a there's a few people I've got on now watching. So, oh, and uh, I just want to say hi to uh, Doug and hi to uh, friend Lindsay Henry from the uh, Gisborne radio station down there. He's watching on the Green Door radio station Lindsay, thank you for tuning in, and Jenny, and uh, yeah, there's quite a few people uh, coming on now to uh, check the show out. So I'm going to put up this picture, and this one is somebody that we all know. So let me uh -huh. step out of the picture here for a minute, and then you can talk about what 
what went on here. So here we go. I'm going to step out and I'm going to, I'm going to get you to uh, talk. Well, I think this was in 2010 when the queen was visiting Toronto and she'd done an official function. And then she was walking around uh, a big park there called Queen's Park. And it was a really hot day. I really had have to admire this woman because at that time she was in her 80s. And when these royals are doing walkabouts, they're always looking for a reason to talk to people. So I thought, well, I'll give her a hand. So I, uh, as she was going by, and I had a New Zealand hat on too, by the way. As she was going by, I just sung out to her and I said, New Zealand says hello. So she came over to me and a lady behind me snapped this picture, which she later emailed to me. So uh, so the Queen said to me, so what are you doing here? Because it was so hot, you know. I said, New Zealand's quite cold. She said, oh, rubbish. And then she said, oh, yes, the seasons. And off she went. So that was my conversation with Her Majesty. And I forgot <laughs> to say, Your Majesty, uh, you know, I forgot all that. I just talked to her like she was another human being. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that must have been exciting for you, my friend. Well, it was, particularly when that lady took the picture. Yes, right. Are you still friends with that lady that took the picture? Oh, I don't know. I've probably got her email address somewhere. But yeah, because you, you, yeah, because you're that type of guy that always say friends with people, you know. Because, well, I do, but I, I, yes. I haven't with that, that lady. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, I just want to show you this um like I have another picture I want to show you, and this I'm going to tell you a little story myself. Um, this was a kind of, how should I say? Um, this is a funny story that I that I have to show, like that I have to tell. And for me, that was when I first met you. So here it is. I'm going to show you this picture. There we go. That is your car. Now I want you to tell us the story about this Bentley. So I'm going to step out of the picture and get you to talk about this. All right. Well, in in eighty in eighty one, I went down for my high school centennial in Christchurch, New Zealand, and prior to that, I'd done a sort of uh, lifestyles goal type course where you had to write down all sorts of crazy things. And one of them was to have a Rolls Royce and a Bentley. And I'm thinking, well, you're never going to get that. You don't have the money. Uh, and so on. So anyway, I get down to New Zealand and I, I find myself looking at for sale ads in the paper. And uh, long story short, I ended up buying this car, which was a 53 Bentley. And um, I, I had it there for uh, a few years. Um, uh, when I was in... Uh, when I was in Toronto, I have a Kiwi buddy of mine, and he is a uh, he was a, a cook in Buckingham Palace for a couple of years. So when the Queen goes around the world, she always takes her cooks with her. So um, the Britannia, which was the Queen's ship, came into Toronto, and when the Queen had left the ship, uh, my friend Terry got an invitation from a lot of the crew that he knew to go on board. So I was invited along. And the Queen, um, uh, the so we got a tour of the ship, and when we were in the crew bar, the Queen's photographer came in and took a picture of us. And that, that Christmas, I got a Christmas card from the palace with the picture on it. Wow. <laughs> And one of the guys that was in the picture was one of her head chefs. So, oh, nice, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the Britannia came into Christchurch, New Zealand. And so uh, after I'd met him in Toronto, so I phoned a ship and I said, look, how about coming home for dinner? So he says, okay. I said, what would you like? He said, Fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> the best. The best, best fish and chips. So, so, so I, I rolled up to the gangplank of, yeah. uh, 
of, of the Britannia in the Bentley and he walked down the ramp. I put him in the back seat and we drove off to a fish and chip shop <laughs> and we, I sent him in and we ordered the fish and chips and then we took him back to mum's place and mum greeted him like a long lost friend. Right. I said, right, off comes the tie, off comes the jacket. And we sat there uh, uh, in front of TV and had fish and chips on TV tables with the Queen's head chef. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a, that's a great oh. story, Murray. That's so fantastic. I, I had, so I had a lot of fun with that car. Um, I did a 5,000-mile trip around New Zealand on it. Right, And then in 88, it was getting a problem where to store it. So I stuck it in a container, and a month later, I drove it out in Toronto. Wow. And I subsequently- You had it shipped over to Toronto. Yeah. It just only took a month. A month. And yeah. And uh, so then I I did a lot of friends, you know, children's weddings in it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I went to a lot of uh, Rolls Royce and Bentley meets around the yes. US and Canada. And I did about 40,000 miles in 25 years. Um, and mm. then in 2007, I sold it. I went back to England. It's since been restored uh, completely. And so um, that's the Bentley. Wow. So I got a story that I want to share with you and share with the our um, people that are watching today. I, um, I was driving along our highway over here, which is called the QEW, Queen Elizabeth Way. <laughs> and um, I was driving from Toronto and I was going home to Mississauga where I live. I live in, in suburb Mississauga. And I was on the highway on the QEW, Queen Elizabeth Way. And I happened to come up behind this Bentley. And on the back of the plate, it had Go Kiwi. And I was following you, but I had to turn off because I was coming to my where I live. So I had to turn off. And I always remember seeing that Go Kiwi. So, I mean, uh, I think a couple of weeks later, I end up at Hemingway's. And um, I was down at Hemingway's at the bar, and we were talking with a group. Of, and I was talking with a group of Kiwis. You happened to be there. Because I happen to say that, hey, guys, the other day I was following this car, this Bentley, and it had Go Kiwi on it. And I couldn't pass him because I was turning off. I was going home. I don't know who this gentleman is. I don't know who owns that. And you happen to be right there. And you say, that was me, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that, man. Because that's the first time I met you, Murray. No, that was please. the first time. Uh, you know, no, uh, at Hemingway's, yeah. And then all the other exciting stuff at Hemingway's and then Toronto with the caravan and all that. You were yeah. part of all that too. So if you yeah, want to talk to us that. about that. Yeah, well, uh, in the 70s and 80s, there was a big ethnic uh, community festival and all the different ethnic cultures in New Zealand, which is many, were encouraged to set up, which they did in church halls, tents, theatres, um, any, anything that they get their hands on. And you went to that pavilion. So if you went to the Russian one, you drank vodka and you, you had <laughs> borscht and you watched Cossack yes. dancing and you went to the Spanish pavilion. Mexican, Spanish, yes. You saw flamenco dancing and you drank sangria and red wine and you had like uh, your entry ticket was a passport. That yes, you paid that was like ten bucks for, it. and you got a bucks, visa yeah. stamp each time you went into a uh, into a pavilion. Well, New Zealand and Australia had a combined pavilion at uh, a, a, a set of club rooms called the Transat Club, which is the yeah. Toronto Australia New Zealand Club. Yes, and that was a very popular pavilion. Very, People would yes, line it was. Up for two hours to get in. The first year I volunteered there, I was doing culture and was um, showing off kiwi fruit, which had just arrived. <laughs> then the second year, they needed somebody to do food. And silly me puts my hand up. So for 10 years, I was orchestrating the food function uh, at the caravan festival there, which goes for nine, uh, nine days. Wow. 
and um, it was a lot of work. And um, my friend Terry, who was the Buckingham Palace chef that I mentioned, uh, he uh, there was a story about him in the paper about having kids cooking classes. So I called him Terry up. Allen. Said, yeah, That's Terry Allen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, look, uh, you know, we've got this festival going here, and we, you know, we've got the food funk, so we don't really know what the hell we're doing. So he uh, he said he'd come down. And long story short, he worked for George Brown College. So he loaned us a lot of equipment. Uh, yeah. He brought some students down to help because we needed uh, volunteer labor. And uh, he ended up setting up a steam table in the tent. We said roast lamb dinners. We said lamb on a bun. We had sausage rolls for the non-believers and, and pavlova. Yes. And uh, we, we took the sales from... Five thousand dollars, I think, to twenty-five thousand dollars over that nine-year yes. period. Yeah, and so it was a lot of fun and um, a lot of work. And um, Martin McSkimming from Hemingways had offered to make the pavlovas, but they kept falling flat, as they tend to do. <laughs> so we had to go somewhere else to get them. <laughs> well, I remember. I remember Terry Allen because at at the um, Transact Club, I also held a Christmas party with for the company that I was working with, and uh, I I organized a Christmas party there, and that's where I met Willie Faraday because the band I hired the band to play, and it was Willie Faraday and his uh, 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 and his group. And uh, Terry Allen was the one that put together all the buffet and everything. It was fantastic, man. Unbelievable. And I'll always remember that. Yeah, he's a great, and great I got guy. video and all that. I've got video of all that you? kind of it's stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing stuff, you know. So great let me guy. continue on. Yeah, let me continue on with some more pictures. I got some more pictures here. So let, uh, let's take a look at this one. You can talk about this one. Here we go. Here oh, we go. yeah. Now, th this is uh, Christmas Eve at a pool in Thailand. Now, I like, when I travel the world, I like staying in hostels. I, I like hanging around. Not only are they cheap, but they're a great source of travel information because you're meeting people coming from places you might want to go to. And they can tell you what to do and what not to do. And if you hang out with young people, it keeps you younger. If I hang out with a lot of old people like you, Dino, I get older faster. Listen, I had to come back and defend myself, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come back and defend myself. All right. So, Sorry. yeah, so you're only a couple of years older than me, so. Oh, okay. But, uh, no, but you are you are a traveler, and uh, and I know the the hostels are something that a lot of people don't know. You, you know, like there's a lot of people that don't know anything about them, so it's great right. that you, uh, you're here today to talk about that. I yeah, know it's well. hard to travel today. But um, you never know. So you know when things are when things get better and things get back to normal, maybe you'll think about you know booking at hostels next time. Yeah, well, uh, this 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 hostel um, in, in Thailand. I mean, it had a beautiful pool, yeah, uh, beautiful rooms. I mean, the hostels of the old days that were flea flea bitten holes in the wall are nothing. I mean, you, you get a beautiful. I mean, you're in a multiple bedded room. And uh, but you're paying only 20 bucks a night, maybe including breakfast. You've got a beautiful mm. pool there, um, the beach is very close. But yeah, I met some very interesting people there. And um, this particular picture was taken Christmas Eve. And I'd taken bought a, I went to Dollarama and I got a whole bunch of Christmas hats and antlers and stuff like that. And I took yeah. them down, gave them to the people. And the first year I, I uh, was there, I said to the the uh, the people that owned the hostel had three restaurants, and one of them was adjoining the hostel. I said to them, look, it's coming out for Christmas. Any chance we could, you know, I'd like to cook a chicken in the oven and do a, a you know, a traditional yes. roast. Yeah. And they said, mm. well, look, you know, we, we didn't know what to do for Christmas. How about we do a buffet, but we'll need to know, you know, how many people to cook for. And so they came up with a menu, 
So I put up a big notice board and said, if you're interested in Christmas dinner, sign here. 70 people wow. signed up. And uh, we had a, a, a tremendous party, and then they came up with games to play afterwards. Yeah. And then, unbeknownst to me, all these people, they'd, they'd got a sort of uh, a visitor book. Right. And they all secretly wrote messages to me and invitations for me wow. to come visit yeah. them in their country. So at some point, somebody got up on a chair and called me up, and they presented me with this book, which is really quite, I was quite emotional about that. Sure, yeah. And um, uh, so in the, uh, so one of your pictures there, you've got a guy standing in front of a fireplace. Um, I've got this one here. I don't know if. That's the one, yeah. That's the now, one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, this is Sean I'm going to step out of the picture here. I'm going to step. Okay. Uh, this is Jean-Pierre. He lives in the south of France. And one day when I had organized a cooking class on the beach, he happened to show up and I was in the lobby. I said, where are you from? He says, oh, I'm Jean-Pierre from France. And this is my daughter, Julia. I said, well, Jean-Pierre, get yourself organized because we have a cooking class on the beach at 5 o'clock. He said, we'll be there, which they were. And... They ended up being 42 people. I just kept adding uh, tables wow. to the beach. And they put wow. on a cooking show, and then and then they had those dishes for us to eat, and they charged us $5. It was fantastic. Wow. So Jean-Pierre said to me, he wrote in that book I mentioned, that you, he says, I'm a lawyer. I'm tired of being a lawyer. There's no money anymore. I want your lifestyle. <laughs> He said, you got to come to France and we'll drink some rosé champagne and you tell me how to do it. <laughs> so I ended up doing that. I had enough airline points. I flew from Bangkok to Marseille. He picked me up. I went to this beautiful house with an affinity pool, a hot tub. Right. He, had, he had a cottage up in the mountains. And um, I uh, so we so that picture is him, him and I standing in front of the fireplace in his house with the book, with his invitation saying, come. Wow. And uh, I suddenly went back. That was in April. I went back in September. He had a place in Croatia. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went down there with him and, and then had a look at Croatia. So, okay. you know, you meet some amazing people in these well, hostels. What about these people? Did you meet them in the hostel too? I met these people in a hostel. They were from Colombia. The Colombians are such lovely, warm, friendly people. Right. And they wanted me to come to Colombia. So um, I I did. I flew there. Uh, um, this was later. This was two years ago, I think. Right. I flew there and they put me up. But their family had like a family compound. It was like a five-star resort up in the coffee mountains. Coffee Mountain. Oh, so you were, there's all these mountains all covered oh, with coffee. They, yes, yes, yes. And I don't know, the, the coffee bean is actually like a little red berry, actually. So we did some hiking all through yes. those mountains there. And I was so hospitable. They're just such fantastic people, the Colombians. Okay, what about um, this? What, what about this one? Can you tell me uh, about this? Okay, now this guy here um, at that Thai hostel, uh, there was a big, tall, skinny Korean guy. He was 25, and I said to him, what are you going to do with your life? Okay, let me see if I can find him while you talk, you know. Uh, oh, here he is. And he here said, is this the guy that's here? Him there. Yeah. That's the guy, yeah. Okay. So I said, so what are you going to do? He said, I am going to ride my bicycle around the world for seven years. Wow. That's his I bike. said, well, that, that's a pretty big dream. Yeah. And that's the tent he was in. So I took him up I took him up the road and I bought him a leather kind of a holster that he could put all his money in, his phone, his camera, all that stuff. And um, he said to me, uh, Kiwi, I meet you back at this hostel in a year's time. Wow. 
So I said, okay, fine, we'll see, you know. So that guy shipped his bike from uh, Korea to China in the winter. He mm -hmm. rode through snow and ice and, and everything. Then he went into Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand. Then he started sending me messages, when are you going to be back at the hostel? So the date was November 2nd. Is that the hostel I, there? <laughs> that was the one with the swimming pool. Oh, okay. In Thailand, yeah. So um, you've got another picture there of his bike all loaded up. Okay, yeah, I think I do, yeah. There, yeah, there it yeah. is. Now, that bike weighed 70 kilos and so did he. So that's what he was pedaling. Wow. So anyway, I got to the hostel November the 2nd at 5.30. This guy was there at 3 o'clock. He was. <laughs> I, I, I was so impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, eh? He did say but, one year. You know, he, he said he would do it. And he kept his word. And it's so important yeah, in life to working. keep your word, you know. That's right. And he yeah. had cycled 13,000 kilometers to come back wow. to the hostel. Wow. Wow. So wow, he, subsequently, right. uh, he subsequently went on to uh, Malaysia, and then he went through Nepal and India and uh, ended up in Istanbul. He'd done 24,000 kilometers. He flew from Istanbul for Toronto, and he spent a couple of weeks with me in Toronto before he went sure. back to Korea. Yeah. So, wow. you know, but I was just so impressed that somebody would do that to keep their word. That's right, yeah. Oh, we're back to the car here. So let me go and find something else here for you, um, Murray, to talk about. I know we've, I've got a couple of other pictures here of you. This one here, that looks like yeah. Niagara Falls, but it's not. That's that's Igasu Falls, which is on the border of uh, Argentina and Brazil. And there's actually 280 waterfalls there. I mean, it's on a mammoth scale. It's fantastic to visit. And you can either see it from the Argentine side or the Brazilian side. And I saw it from both. Oh, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing there this, this hat. <laughs> Here. Yeah. And, uh, this hat I, I bought in the uh, Marble Mountains of Taiwan. Marble Mountains. They have... They have a, a big sort of a. Why won't this sit on my head properly? Um, well, if you if you move it to the left a little bit, it'll sit on your head properly. Oh, I know. There it is. There you go, man. Um, uh, wow. Yeah, they they have a whole area in, in in Taiwan. There, it's all marble, and you go through these big gorges. And it's quite a lot like New Zealand. Yeah. And there was a little stall there selling these hats, and it was all beautifully, you know, embroidered. Embroidered, these, yeah. All these beads and shells. So wow. I wore that for years. Um, so uh, yeah. So this one is in Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia has got seventy five hundred square kilometers of salt lakes, and that monument is built out of blocks of salt, and it is ten billion tons of salt they have there. And, wow, uh, that's, and it's still there today. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and Man. You've got some other pictures there where the salt lake, actually, when it rains, the rain sits on top of the lake, and you get oh, amazing see, yeah. reflective pictures. We'll get to one later. This yeah. one here is a shot of a village called the Children's Republic in Argentina. Uh, it's out, outside of... Um, uh, Buenos Aires, and this was opened by Evita Peron in 1951 as a children's village, and it's got buildings that are children's height. So you go into a bank, you go into government buildings; they're all built for kids' heights. Quite amazing. Wow! And there's a playground and so on. But Walt Disney came there, uh, and that's where he got the inspiration to do Disneyland. Oh, geez. Look at this one here. What's this? This, uh, the, this is right? this is a hostel in the middle of the sea, two hours off the coast of Colombia. And you sleep in these colorful hammocks. They have a composting toilet. Um, they have uh, uh, 
local people come by with seafood and it's full of young people and you take a high speed uh, boat that's got like two 200 horsepower motors on it, two hours from wow. Cartagena. Wow. That's out in the ocean. Right in the middle of the ocean. I mean, wow, it's sitting, man. It was built something 20, else. It was built 20 years ago at some, somebody's house, and then they wow. yeah, it yeah. into the hostel. But it's sitting on a, obviously on a reef or something. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, this one is of you. Where were you on this one? Now, now this one, uh, this is on the Bolivia, the Bolivian salt fields. And um, I stayed in a hostel there, and they had a tour going from the hostel. Uh, seven of us got into a, a Toyota Land Cruiser and um, they took us out onto these vast salt lakes. And in the middle of the lake was this big building, which was a restaurant where we had our lunch, all built out of blocks of salt. And outside the restaurant are all these flags. And look at this flag I found. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, <laughs> hey, I, th I was going to ask you, did you put it there or somebody else? No, it was you? already there. In fact, wow. I signed it. I signed it later yeah, on. Yeah, I put yeah. my signature on the. But somebody had left it there. There's also a New Zealand flag there too. Wow. It's amazing, man. That was awesome to see that. Yeah, I thought that you put it there. No, so, no. Yeah. Wow, that was amazing. Um, what about this this one here? Yeah, this here is uh, a place called San Carlos de Bariloche in Argentina. Uh, it's heading towards the south of Argentina where you've got the glaciers. But this is almost the same as Queenstown, New Zealand. It has a hillside. It has a lake. It has a snow-capped Andes Mountains um, on the horizon. So they ski in the winter, and it's a summer resort. And because it reminded a lot of Germans of Swiss of their home country, there's a lot of Germans and Swiss there, and the main streets are lined with Swiss chocolate shops wow. and German bars. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, see, there you go, folks. You see, that's the guy that he, he – travels around the world and he knows all these spots and all these good spots and all these uh, hostels that you can uh, book into. So the, the, the hostel job, there, right? mm -hmm. the hostel and, and, Bar and Barilocci there was on the 10th floor of a condo building and they bought two condos and turned it into a hostel. And so you had this fabulous view. In fact, that picture's taken from, from the right. 10th floor of that building. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let me just step Uh, this is a hostel in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, near, Ca uh, near Cancun. And again, I met so many interesting people here. Um, the Colombians were two of them. And uh, I also met a young Canadian guy um, who's a bit of a backwoods, shy type person. But um, anyway, he uh, wrote me an amazing poem. Uh, for my birthday, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read it to you later. Yeah. But, um, it, You're talking it's, about like you just had a birthday too, right? Well, I did. Yeah, this last week, I believe, right? I, I so, did. Hang on, let me just bring that picture up over there so we can see you. And let me so. So what about this old train here? I can see there's an old. Train. Yeah. Now, uh, I told you that we had this little. Um, Toyota Land Cruiser in, in Bolivia. And before you go on to the lake, uh, the, the, the salt lakes, there's a steam train cemetery there that's been there 150 years. And it's got all of these steam engines and carriages, some of them not very good shape, and they've been sitting there for that long. So they take you to climb all over these things for half an hour, then they take you out to, uh, to the um, salt flats. Wow, they take you out to the salt flats, eh? Well, amazing. Mm. So, and uh, what about this one here? Now, these two boys are two brothers, yep. and they play rugby. And oh. I met them at that Mexican hostel that you looked at before. And this is Bautista and his uh, younger brother, uh, Pancho. And so Bautista kept um, sending me uh, messages on WhatsApp. When are you coming to Argentina? When are you coming to Argentina? So... Um, 
in September, there was going to be a rugby game between the New Zealand All Blacks and the South African Pumas. And so I had enough airline points to get down there. So I flew down there and they said, well, instead of paying money at a hostel, come and stay with our family and give us the money you would have given the hostel. Well, I ended up staying about three weeks with them. And <laughs> that uh, that Children's Republic um, yeah. uh, sort of Disneyland place was right around the corner from their house. And so um, it, it was really quite a uh, um, interesting time living with that family. The weather was wonderful. And um, they actually invited me. I, I went to other parts of Argentina, and then they invited me back to have Christmas mm -hmm. with them, yeah. which I did. So um, you got a so, friend up here. I can see you got a friend up there. Look, look. Oh yeah, that, that's uh, <laughs> where was northern, that? Where? That's northern Argentina. That's uh, an alpaca, and the wool makes fabulous sweaters. You get a wonderful wool sweater. It's very light, very warm for sixteen dollars, twenty dollars. Yes, yeah, that yeah alpaca. Like I bought that. I bought our friend Martin one back actually. Oh really? I spend big on Martin. Yeah. Oh, you spend big on Martin. I'm I'm yeah. sure you. Yeah, I'm sure you paid a lot of money for that. Um, <laughs> so what do we got here? Okay, this is an. Um, I got to change hats again. Hang on a minute. Ah. This is northern Argentina, and um, this is up at forty three hundred fifty meters, which is. 14,000 feet, I think. And you can't see it very well in this picture, but um, I, I drove up there with some Aussie guys from the hostel. But it's um, in the background, there is mountains of 14 different colors. It's called Humamaka. And uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing vista because you've got all these, I, I guess it's different minerals or, you know, oxidizing, something like that. Yes, yes. Um, so that's um, northern Argentina, and that's where I got this hat. Yeah, it's, it's all different colors, just like your hat. By the and way, the yeah. colors stay too. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a dry area up there yeah. that they they have very colorful hats, and somehow the dye does not bleach. Nice, nice. By the way, Murray, you got Liz Ann's on, so I'm sure she's going to tell. Uh, Hi, Martin Lizzie. <laughs> so Liz Ann's watching. So anyway, uh, let me let me check the next picture and see what we got here, my friend. Oh, that's a little somebody's yeah. climbing climbing up a ladder. Is that to no, go to the washroom? No, that's a washroom sign in a disco in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go upstairs. You got to climb the ladder to go to the washroom. No, that's a guy <laughs> peeking over the wall into oh. the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, that's quite funny. That one, man. So, what about this one? Where? Where were you? That's, that's uh, a salt lake, right? Yeah, that's the salt lakes. That's actually, you know, uh, Argentina has some too. So that was salt lakes there. And they've actually harvested some of the um, salt. You can see where they've, they've dug out strips of salt, which they sell, presumably. Um, when I was staying in Bariloche, there was some uh, Aussie and other students going to climb a mountain the next day. And according to the guidebook, it was actually not too difficult to climb. So I said, I, you know, I, I asked if I could go with them. Well, it turned out to be 1,750 metres, which is 5,700 feet. It took us four hours to get up there. Uh, they help, had to help me across creeks. They had to help me around rocky crags, but I got there. Oh. And you, you see, we're right up near the snow line there. Yeah, wow. Um, so it was four hours up, three three down. So when we got down, I bought all the beer. When we were sitting on the balcony, like at that view you saw earlier. And the beer is cheaper, cheap there too, eh? Yeah, and this, the, and Argentina uh, has a lot of craft breweries. Oh, yeah. Natural beer, yeah. Natural beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. So And um, what about this one here, this picture here? What does that tell you? Now, that's on the salt flats in Bolivia. Mm-hmm. When it rains, the, the water is on the uh, it sits on top of the salt. So, like somebody else, you can actually walk on water. Um, so, the the guy that's the driver of the um, 
vehicle, he's got this little toy uh, dinosaur. So he, he gets you off in the distance. We all had to put our arms on the shoulder of the person in front. And then he's got this little uh, dinosaur sitting on the, uh, uh, on, <laughs> on the, on the salt. On the and salt, he puts yeah. a camera. He puts a camera right down beside it, and it gives you this illusional picture. And so they're, they're famous on this particular uh, Salar de la Uni. Uh, they're famous <laughs> for taking these illusionary pictures. Wow. Amazing. So there we go. Look at this. You must have that's, been somewhere in the mountains. That's the Coffee Mountains of Colombia. Coffee Mountains in Colombia. Now, is the coffee different there than the coffee well, you buy fantastic. here? The, very, very good coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's oh, the yeah. Colombian coffee. And, I mean, you, you drive by these places where they're roasting it, and, I mean, you want to stop and have one. I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. What do we got here, Murray? Um, this was a that, disco. That must have been at a party somewhere. It's got to be that a party. Well, there was a disco around the corner from the Mexican hostel that I was in. Yep. And uh, the hostel actually had a lot of people from Argentina there. And this was an Argentinian disco. And um, we would, you know, the Argentinians, they eat very late. They don't eat till dinner till 10 o'clock at night. They just sit around and have drinks. And then about 1, 1.30, 2, we would go to the disco. Everybody and party. Disco, and everybody <laughs> party. So I would be there until 3 or 4 in the morning with them. Wow. And because I'm the oldest guy in the bloody place, they want yeah, to have you selfies said it. with me. You said yeah. it, not me. You're so, the oldest guy. <laughs> so they're all wanting selfies, and I'd be wandering around town the next day, and somebody yell out, Kiwi, Kiwi. And I thought, who the heck, who's this? And it was some <laughs> kids that had a selfie with me in the disco. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's cool, brother. So um, I know we're getting close to the end of everything here now, but we're back right. to these people here. Yeah, the well, ones, that's, that's yeah. the Colombians. Yes. And so now um, um, that's – you met them in Colombia, right? These no, no, here? I met them in that Mexican hostel. On oh, oh, the Mexican hostel. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool. So, Murray, I tell you, man, you've been around. You had a great experience of uh, your life experience and um, you know, traveling around to different places. So now you're you're retired now? You just – I'm retired. I like – I do community gardening. Um uh, around Dundas in Parliament, I do yeah. house sitting. And um, you are, and you are sitting, uh, um, like you're looking after a house for the gentleman yeah. that is yeah. watching you right now. Yeah. I just saw a message well, that oh, Lizanne maybe. sent. Yes, Lizanne maybe. just sent him. Martin's yeah. watching right yes. now. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. what I'd like to say to you um, is, uh, you know, for Lizanne. And Martin, is the house in good condition right now? Uh, have oh, you done the gardens? Have you I think, cleaned well, up? Did you wash to, the dishes? They'll have to paint a bit, I think. The garden's a wreck. Okay. Um, I think the car's a wreck. Uh, and um, did you, the roof's leaking. No, I, it's terrible. I got control on the cars. Now, if, if yeah. Martin cannot come back to Canada, I'll, I'll get you to pack up. We'll send it to him. And I'll keep the cars. Yeah, Just well, make sure could, that you could know, check okay. with Martin. You could check with Martin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, listen, I, I got some, um, you know, gems of wisdom that I'd like to read before. Yes. Have we got time for that? Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Okay. So, yep, go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, man. We've got a couple. We've got a couple of minutes left. I hit on. <clears throat> and just to remind everybody that. Uh, Lest we forget, it's also the Anzac Day down in uh, New Zealand and Australia. So uh, I just wanted to let everybody know. And if you did miss the opening, what I did is that I started out with the Anzac Day National Day of Remembrance. And I posted my brothers that served in the New Zealand Army. So uh, my two brothers and, and my cousin so just and, and my uncle. So I just want to let everybody know about that. You can go back and re rewatch it, catch it, and uh, carry on. Uh, okay, so right. here's some Joe's. Uh, you know, seeing I've been around a while, I have a few gems of wisdom. Yes. So 
travel is the best university in the world because you always graduate. Mm. Uh, I actually wrote a book on travel, but it helps you to know your strengths and weaknesses and passions and thereby get onto the right job. This is very important for young people. Yes. Now, if you've got a son or daughter or nephew or niece and they don't know what to do with their lives, give them some money and tell them to go traveling and they'll find themselves. Yeah. Um, have a job that involves your hobbies or your passions. Um, I should never have trained to be an accountant. I'm more of a people person than a numbers person. And you often can't see the wood for the trees as to what your skills are. Um, live close to where you work so you don't waste time and money commuting. Follow your gut feel and not listen to well-meaning advice of others. Um, we're put on this earth to live, not work. Um, better to have tried and failed than never to have tried at all. In business, friends become clients and clients become friends. And the best form of advertising is repeats and referrals and word of mouth. And if it scares the hell out of you, you should probably do it. So I've done bungee jumping, skydiving, whitewater rafting with Martin, actually, in Queenstown, parasailing, and I sailed from Tahiti to Tonga on a, a circumnavigation with Doug, Doug Henderson's yacht. I'd never sailed on a yacht before. Um, so, you know, sometimes you've got to take on things that are, are scary, but, um, you know, it helps your confidence when you yes. come through to the other yeah. side. Yeah. Well, Murray. And, and, and oh, just can I read this yeah, poem? Sure. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, you've got time, my friend. Um, because I think this this, this guy is, uh, as I say, quite a backwoods type, but he's very uh, talented. And I was so touched when he when he uh, got up. We went for lunch on my birthday, and he got up. Mm -hmm. with, um, his name's Chase Walters. At this right. time, he was 21, and it was called Ode to Kiwi. Ode says, to Kiwi. Ode. The light okay. seemed to alter in color. The earth seemed to shift in its frame. Near the place of my seating came a jovial greeting with a cheery, hi, what's your name? With his hand extended in friendship, there stood a small elf in his shorts. That's me. <laughs> uh, a curious creature, a sage and a teacher, a personable wizard of sorts. By this random and just by chance meeting, the adventure, no choice, had begun. With this inexplicable genie, my game was already half won. This gent is a gem in the jungle, mentor, grandfather and friend. Nothing could let me forget him. These memories will last to the end. If you ever measure the manage the pleasure of meeting this fine human being, please give him my best, a good thump on the chest. He's among the finest I've seen. This ode is merely a token to a great fellow soul of the wind, a man with a far greater number of countries in which he has sinned. Uh, this ever gregarious, never nefarious, multi-dimensional, very exceptional Murray Kiwi Crompton. Wow. Now, isn't that fantastic from a 21-year-old? Unbelievable. Murray Kiwi Crompton, I just want to thank you very much for coming on today. On and in, 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 in that picture of the Bentley is my good mate, Kerry O'Brien from, uh, uh, yep. from Australia, but he's been here as long as I have in Canada. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Murray. I just appreciate you coming on to Talking Voices on Maori Chair TV. And I just want to uh, say thank you to everybody that's come on. I can see a lot of people, Lindsay O'Connor, Lizanne, Martin, and Fred. And, and uh, maybe Willie Faraday's um, uh, rallies from Missouri. They might be watching too, Darlene. Yes, that's right, because so I did said, see that post. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So Missouri well, says hello. <laughs> Missouri says hello, yeah. And I've got the channel YouTube YouTube channel on. I've got my Facebook channel on and Maori Chair TV channel. So I've got these channels going. And I did see earlier Mohangi. Mohangi was on. So thank okay. you very much, everybody, for coming on. Okay. I just want to say again to um, 
Murray Kiwi Crompton, thank you very much for coming on, Murray. We really do appreciate that, sir. And You're lest welcome. we forget, and don't forget, at five o'clock, I'll be back here with Five Alive. Five songs I'm going to be singing at five o'clock today, in about an hour from now. Thanks very much, Murray. Have a good day, sir. Thanks very much. Kia ora. Kia ora.